We receive his ways and more of his ways. We accept his will. One of the first offerings we are introduced to in the Bible as a sacrifice is called the whole burnt offering. The whole burnt offering was an offering where you took an animal, killed the animal, his blood had to flow, that means he had to pour out his life. His life had to go, his way had to go. And the Bible tells us that as he poured out his life, that offering had to go on top of the altar. And then, ladies and gentlemen, the entire offering was to be consumed in the fire. Nothing was to be left. The total offering was to be consumed in the fire. A bullock was used in a burnt offering. A sheep or a lamb. Number three, a goat. Number four, a turtle dove. If you didn't have much money, you could even use a pigeon. Five, quote, animals that were used for burnt offerings. The bullock, the sheep or lamb, the goat, the turtle dove, the pigeon. Hear me. They had to burn this offering up totally. Little did they understand this offering represented Jesus Christ. And the coming to the altar was to bring this offering. The altar then entailed the willingness of the offerer. The offerer had to come being clean before the Lord. The offerer had to come, um, ladies and gentlemen, to worship the Lord, to accept his will. The offerer had to come um, to supply God's desires. It is Jesus saying how he was born to do the will of his Father. Teaching us that we are born not for ourselves, but for the will of God. This offering therefore typified, number one, delights to God's will. The offering said, I delight in doing thy will, O God. Number two, the offering typified substitution. You began to substitute. God came to pitch it for you, knowing you would strike out. But he substituted in your place. And number three, a burnt offering always typified voluntary. A voluntary offering. You had to do it willingly. You had to give yourself for it. Now how do we put together the altar and the song? In the day of King Hezekiah, he comes to a throne behind the rulership of his father. His father's name was Ahaz. You possibly remember this wicked diabolical king that plummeted the people of God into obscurity in the will of God. This wicked ungodly king took the entire nation down to ruin and brought about poverty brought about uh, a licentious lifestyle and brought about great immorality whenever you go against God and refuse to go to the altar of God want everything for yourself it brings about poverty hear me the 50s were known as the silent years by historians the 60s were known as a riotous years. The 70s were known as the me generation. Now we are in the 80s. We are recuperating from the me generation. Everything for me. If it does good, if it feels good, do it. But ladies and gentlemen, the 70s was the reign of King Ahaz. It was the reign where every man went his own way. But now there comes to the throne the 14th king of Judah. His name is Hezekiah. Hezekiah comes to the throne having as his instructor God's prophet for that time whose name was Micah. 
Micah is he who comes and reminds us that truly we are filled with the power. It is a Hezekiah, therefore, who abolishes and eliminates the Canish Knightish practices engaged in by the church. It is a Hezekiah who says there is something inherently wrong with the church endorsing um, the gay movement as a lifestyle. It was a Hezekiah that said there's something inherently wrong um, with the acceptance of abortion. It was a Hezekiah that said there's something inherently wrong um, with apartheid. There's something inherently wrong um, with the nuclear arms buildup. Ladies and gentlemen, Hezekiah eliminated many of the Canish Knightish practices that was overcoming the church. And it is a Hezekiah that brings back into being the ceremonial offerings unto the Lord. Watch it. He willed that God's will would be paramount among the people. If you want God to do something in your life and your home, you must will it so. So Hezekiah willed that the Lord's Spirit would return. He initiated religious reform. He initiated the return to the temple for worship. And now Hezekiah tells us an important message. He initiates the purpose of the choir. He says, I want the choir to get out the cymbals and the psalteries and the harp as David had commanded you and as Gad the king seer had said and Nathan the prophet tells us biblically it's right to do. He says, now the Levites are to stand with the instruments that David introduced to the church. But the bugle cord or the trumpet cord is to be the priest. I want only priests to blow the trumpets. The Bible said Hezekiah commanded they return to the burnt offering. That they burn up all of human life. Burn up human will, human ambition. Burn up personal goals and personal thoughts burn up the personal will and he said when it is being burnt start singing a song start praising God listen at the voice of Hezekiah in the midst of your storm in the midst of the fire in your life in the midst of your affliction in the midst of everything going wrong Hezekiah said when the fire begins to burn away the dross of your life when the fire begins to burn and put in smoke your dreams when the fire seems to consume your ambitions when the fire takes away your first choice you gotta end up with second choice he said don't complain but start singing a song he said the altar and the song goes together in the midst of your fire, in the midst of your storm, in the midst of your burden, in the midst of your problem, in the midst of losing everything you worked hard to gain, in the midst of seeing your dreams go up in smoke and the family begin to disintegrate that you have laboriously tried to put together in the midst of seeing everything you worked for being overtaken because of inflation in the midst of your life crumbling under the support systems you have built he said sing a song and praise the Lord and let God have his way oh praise him right now. 